I started a revolution. What we think of as the factory of the future I is already becoming changed reality. everything. I have experienced history. I am a favorite toy. I am the first choice. I am unique, powerful, timeless. I have been delivering day after day for 60 years. I am a leader, nerd, trendsetter. I am a legend. I am Cmatic Controller. The factory of the future is typified by a heavy flow of information. It's really fascinating. Zematic. High-tech industrial automation. Give me a break with the science fiction, please. Siemens. Ingenuity for life. So, hey, everybody. Hey, robotics community. We are the guys from Siemens here, um, from industry. Some of you may know us. Since decade, we are joining forces to pushing the boundaries of what is possible in industrial application to its limits. And we did in the past some very great jobs together, automation and robotics. You know, in this example here, robotics are doing predefined and planned routine tasks. Uh, they are performing very well. They are building our cars every day. And this is great. But today, we want to talk with you about applications that pushing the future of um, robotics, including automation. And here we are talking about AI, so for sure we, uh, we choose something with AI. And what we mean is to reach something from pre-planned pre routines to systems that are enabled to perform tasks by themselves, so we call it, or everyone has called this type of machines, autonomous robot systems. Some kinds of research I did in this um, direction and really good result was achieved as we heard in the previous um, speeches as well. And we want to talk here, we both guys, about a special thing and a big problem in um, robotics, that is robotics grasping. How to grasp, how to pick objects. And it sounds very easy, but it isn't. It's really high sophisticated in detail. I want to show you some results we did in the recent year. We have a lot of experience and researching um, from the last years. We started in 2016, 2017 uh, with the University of California in Berkeley with the great Ken, Ken Goldberg, Professor Ken Goldberg, to explore what is possible to train um, robots with neural networks. A lot of you are doing um, jobs in this direction, and you may know that there is something like perception, cognition, and action. As you can see here on the screen, that a robot identifies objects, calculating good grasp candidates, and performing um, the, the grasping. And we want to go in detail with you today and where is the hard job to be done in the future. So as you can see here, grasp scanning dates are calculated and the robot is enabled to grasp the object. So this is possible in two directions. You can say, if you know everything about the object, then it's fine. And we want to talk with you about what is if you have no information about this kind of object. In detail, we call it the approach of grasping unknown objects. That means we have no CID model um, before, we have no information about the objects, and okay, how to use like this in which application? This is really a question. Grasping of known objects is perfectly for production and doing very precise 
um, assembly task because you know everything about the object at one time. If you come to environments that are very with a, have to deal with a high frequency of different objects, it is not suitable anymore to, grasp, uh, to do this uh, approach, and you have to train a network to de define and identify and grasping object by itself. So in 2018, we bring this to life and created a very easy demonstrator to, yeah, to show you that this system is a uh, enabled and powered to grasp any object at runtime. You can give them anything you want, and this uh, system can pick it up. Okay, what is the performance? It's about roughly 80%. This is quite good for researching, but we do have to improve it. For sure, it's not only the cognition, it's also about which manipulation is possible uh, with the robot arms. And here we did some great research also with Stanford University. Uh, to uh, explore what is possible with the next generation of robot grippers. In 2019, we combined these approaches with the approach of, you know it, uh, object detection. So this use case demonstrated that the robot is able to grasp uh, or identify objects you want to wish, like this fruit here or this kind of dog. And if some objects are in front of the robot he doesn't know or it, or it doesn't know, then he is able to, to grasp this object as well and to deal with it. And then we come to 2020 and make some offsets here, going in the direction of, we call it flexible kitting. That means we utilize the robot grasping as we explored it in the recent years and bring it to a use case for, in this case, was a Procter & Gamble challenge. Um, and to do flexible kitting, that means that kits are put, um, prepared for shaving sets and something like this. It looks easy, but it is. It's really high sophisticated to have a really flexible sit uh, system that can decide how to um, make the kitting on at one time. And then we come to 2020, and we see more and more that these approaches are very valuable for the market outside. And we started with a proof of concept in an industry we really know and believe that makes the most sense here. And this is Intralogistics. We made a modular and open approach for customers we are dealing with. This is our automation experts. So as you can see it here on the, on the screen, it's only a PLC who is doing all the jobs in the automation, in the machinery, in the line. And we touched only one single gray box right of it to perform our neural networks for us. And this in an environment the people outside who are doing and dealing with automation every day are very familiar with. So we're calculating the grasping points at runtime and bringing to the automation experts. And this vision system independent, robot independent, and gripper independent or agnostic. And I give you one example, robot agnostic, what does it mean? If you wish, you can go, go to the Sematic Robot Library booth on this direction here, and we can show you how to have a manufacturer independent approach to program robots in an automation environment. And why this is very helpful, we will show you at the booth. At least I want to show you some demonstration to utilize the grasping of any objects without any information at, at runtime in a very easy demonstrator. This is a use case of intralogistics, and this is the topic here. Intralogistics have to deal with a high frequency of objects. And this is why we uh, guys are here on the stage today. I don't, uh, we don't introduce, introduce ourselves so far. I'm Christopher Schütter, I'm from Siemens. I'm the product lead of the productization of flexible grasping at Siemens. And we bring this to life in Intellogistics. And Paul, maybe can you say some words to you? Yeah, and uh, hi, and actually I am also a product lead um, for this product. I'm the techie guy and I'm responsible for the product organization and R&D operations here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Our mission is to provide people with today's unsolved problem of grasping any objects for automation expert for anyone who want to use it. And we are doing the job for you if you wish it. 
If you want to have it, get in, co in contact with us. And where we do it this, I call it into logistics. But what is the fact? We are all ordering, ship, uh, ordering online every evening. We are doing um, e-commerce every evening. We are uh, selling a lot of products. And this is called a long-term effect or long-term dealing uh, with objects. That means you're not selling one or two very valuable things. You are sell uh, selling 100,000 of less valuable goods. And this is the problem for robotics. Today, these guys are doing the job in e-commerce fulfillment for us every day. Hundreds of people are staying there and picking one to the another box. It's completely human work today. They have to do it in 500, 600 picks per hour. This is a completely monotonous task. And why it's not automated? That is the reason why I'm staying here. The system that is aiming to solve the problem is called piece picking. And piece picking means exactly the task of the human workforce are doing today. And it seems it was not able to automate it today. I'll give you some examples. If you take a look in e-commerce, in general merchandise, it means all the products you want to order every evening at Amazon or feel free uh, for, your, for your platform, there is an automation percent of under 1% of automation system. It's completely manual work. Why? What was the problem? The problem was robot grasping. There was no really good approach available beside vision to grasp really or deal with the high variety of um, objects in into logistics. And you can also see that the CAGR, that means the growth rate of this kind of systems, it's enormous. Over 90% is, is completely incredible. And you see that all you guys here around us, you are searching, you're doing the research in this direction to solve this problem for the people who are doing this monotonous task every day. And we want to show you what we plan to do. Paul, can you say some words? Cool. Christopher, thanks a lot. And uh, we still have time. So, uh, you know, Christopher told you why we need this uh, picking automation. And maybe I can tell you how we actually do it technically. Because, you know, if you, if you just think about it, it looks like picking is really easy, right? A two-year-old can pick, but you know it's not very easy. We have been researching this topic for the last five years, and um, it's pretty hard. And you know, you can take an uh, you can take a Dexnet, and you can build a, a AI-based solution to grasp most of the objects most of the times, but that's never good enough, especially not good enough in interlogistics, because in interlogistics you deal with all sorts of situations. You have to pick objects that are, for example, that might have reflective surfaces or transparent surfaces. You might have objects that you need to pick out of, out of the box that are really, really tightly packaged together. Think of a toothpaste brush packages you literally don't even see where one, uh, you know, you would even struggle to pick it with your, with your hand sometimes. And objects fall out of the box, you know. Sometimes the gripper picks two objects instead of one. And sometimes uh, even the box position changes slightly. And if you don't handle the situation properly, next time the gripper will pick the box instead of the object. A lot of real-time complexity needs to be handled before you can really automate piece picking in interlogistics industry. And this is what we are doing. We are not doing the robots. We are not doing, uh, you know, camera, cameras or sensors. We focus our efforts on the thing in the middle, on the AI-based software system that takes a depth image and an RGB image as input, and provides the three or five best picking points you know, by analyzing the depth image. And the trick here, the trick here, if you have a perfect depth image, then it might work. But you never have a perfect depth image. It's distorted. 
the cameras, the low-cost cameras, don't really give a high-quality depth image. You need to do a lot of pre-processing. You need to fill the gaps in the depth image. You need to pre-process the low-cost or low-fidelity depth image in order for the neural network to generate the grasping points properly. And this is precisely what we do. Yeah, so um, it's not only this that is important. The AI performance is really key to our customers. But what is really important for them is the flexibility and speed. Some of our customers want to run AI directly on the machine or very near to the robot. We can support this. Some of our customers have IPCs, industrial PCs, that we also support. Actually, our algorithm is nothing else in its, uh, in its substance than a Docker image somewhere you know, running on your Linux server or something like this and providing, providing easy to use RESTful API so that you can try it out. And in fact, this is what we are doing now. We are putting that logic you know, as sort of a microservice on the cloud and making it available to everyone so that if you know, peace picking or pick and place is something that you guys do or something that is part maybe of your larger, larger setup, you can literally take our uh, RESTful APIs and test it very quickly and try it out and maybe integrate in your solution, at least demo. Demo it really quickly to your customers. And that's our appeal. That's why we're here. We would really like to you know, find collaborators because this pin picking is a collaborative effort. Nobody can do it alone. And uh, we believe that together we can really provide value to our customers, specifically in interlogistics and then in manufacturing. So here we are. Please get in touch with us if you have a, an exciting challenge in pin picking. And uh, have fun during those two days. Christopher, over to you. Yeah, I would also like to say thank you to you. We are really thrilled to be here, and uh, you made great um, examples also here in the direction of uh, grasping, as we saw it in the previous um, uh, the pr uh, presentations. So we won't really talk with you. Come to us. Have some chats with us. Let's explore what we can do to get it together. And thank you very much. Let's drive the robotics market forward. And that together. Thanks. Thank you.